you're like a like a hot male actor. <laughs> Do you know, like right? Like he's like a sexy male oh, actor, and that's like a new. Okay, yeah. I mean, you're gonna break the camera. Yeah. But like... <laughs> Hi. Hello. It's nice to see and finally like actually meet you. I know cause... we've been following each other on we, Twitter. Back to forth, like we keep missing each other. Seen, yeah, yeah. Seen each other's backs at events and yep. stuff like that. Yep. So yep. it's good to so, sit with you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Character Media, for finally putting yeah, us in the same room. Guys. It worked out. Well, yeah, I yeah. want to say congratulations on Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Thank you. Thank Yay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And congrats on your multi seasons. Thank you. On the Flash, that's yeah. that's the DC universe on that is killing it, man. Yeah, they just keep. Pumping them out. It's like their biggest show, right, at the moment now with Arrow going? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't like keep up with that. <laughs> it is. We're going to say it. Okay, is. Yeah, You're it's on the, the biggest best show. show awesome. And uh, it's because yeah. of me. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm are you a big comic book person? I am. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, yes and no. Depends on the depends on the not even like the brand, but like the universe in the brand. Mm -hmm. Like if you asked me anything about X Men, I'd be like, oh yeah, I know that. But yeah. if you ask me anything about generally almost any other corner of like the Marvel Universe and comics, I'm like, I don't know. Really? Yeah. I don't know if that's a nice thing to say, but you strike no. me as somebody who would know everything about the comics. <laughs> I don't know what that says. I is. know everything. Yeah, I don't know. How long have you lived in the States? 2012. 2012. Oh, I say 20 years. So for a while. You're from Chicago. I'm from Chicago. Right? You did yeah. your homework. Yeah, 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 I'm from Chicago. Um, I've lived in LA Easy. for 11 years. Oh, cool. Which is crazy. Oh, about the yeah. same amount of time. Was there like an adjustment period for you coming in to LA? Or? Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. I didn't grow up in the city, so I I feel like I'm still kind of a small town girl. Yeah. And so moving to a big city was a huge change. And I didn't, oh. you know, originally come here to be in front of the camera. And yeah. so that was a big change too. And Hollywood's crazy. Do you find it just gets crazier the deeper you get? Or just in a different way, it's just sort of like... Yeah, in a different way. Out, it, like... I feel like I finally have my sea legs, you know, like I know my yeah. way around and I'm not trying to like figure out the industry anymore, mm -hmm. but it does get crazy in a lot of different ways, yeah. right? Yeah, it likes to throw curveballs. Yeah. Right? It's like the moment you're like, okay, great, I've got, I've got the hang of this, I'm surfing this wave, and then yeah. I'll just be like, ah, oh, second wave! What's like a, been a curveball moment for you? Dealing with the... Because I don't... Th I, Here's one thing that I don't think anyone really thinks about when they get into this industry, which is when you succeed, which in some ways can be measured by like financial stability, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, yeah. the early years are marked with a lot of like, when's the next job? Right. How are we going to eat? Once you get that stability, mm -hmm. the other stability goes out, which is like life stability because oh, yeah, you're traveling yeah. all the time and so you're not true. there. And it's not a thing that I ever thought of yeah. as like a 20 year old getting into this being like, oh, how am I going to set up my life around not being around? I mean, we're both we're both married, like yeah. not being around my partner half the time and they can't travel with us sometimes. Especially when they're not actors and they yeah. don't understand. I mean, your wife is kind of in the in the industry. But sort of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But she yeah. had to stay put. So, you know, yeah. anytime we're away, it's like, oh, well, I've got a job that's like seven months somewhere else. I'm just there and you're just I here. I know, it's really hard. Yeah. I, My husband and I are newly married, so we're like trying oh, to congrats. figure that. Thanks. I mean, two years, but newer compared to you guys. Right, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we're still trying to figure that out of you know, me being in Vancouver and him being here. Yeah. When there's a will, there's a way. It's and good, also, yeah. it's you know, you can bounce back and forth. Yeah. Is, is sort of what we've come to. Um, what's it like filming The Flash? It's great. We're on our seventh season. We yeah. just wrapped our seventh season. So, you know, as you're on a show for that long, you're just really comfortable with everybody. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. a super, like, warm, welcoming set. I mean, I was really nervous my first day, you know, because I came on in season five. Yeah. Um, so, you know, everyone like already knows each other and I don't know if you were a cool kid in school, but I no, wasn't. Absolutely not. Yeah, no, I feel like a lot of actors weren't. Yeah, <laughs> That's why I, I, I become don't actors. think we were all like the theater kids or yeah, whatever. Yeah, no, or, we were yeah. all really weird. No. Um, so like, it's like coming in on your first day and everyone already knows each other and you know, like finding your seat at the lunch tables yeah. and stuff like that. It was yeah. nervous, but they were, they were all so wonderful and oh, I feel like yeah. it's just been a really great experience. It's super tiring though, because we're at 22 episode season. So how, we go from- How long from, are your days? Well, well because of COVID, we're short, we're shorter now uh, okay. so um, but yeah. yeah we used to go long days we used to do nights there is a lot of night in, yeah. in that show yeah Actually, now a lot I'm of about cold it. nights in the rain oh, in Vancouver oh no yeah night shoots are the worst when did you guys shoot Falcon and the Winter Soldier a bulk of it was pre-pandemic and then some okay. of it was during as oh, well really? but it was also a lot of night yeah where did it. you film uh, Atlanta and Prague 
Prague. Yeah. That's so cool. Which is very cool. Yeah. Except I've now been to Prague three times and I haven't seen any of it. Oh, that's sad. First time was for another gig. I was mm -hmm. only there for a week and it was like flat chat. It was like 16 hour days yeah, and yeah, I just yeah. couldn't see anything. I was like, okay, that's well, right. it's fine. Next time I'll come back. I'll come back. We went back for Falcon. Five days after we landed, they were like, pandemic you got to go. Like yeah. we had to get home, the travel ban's coming in. Yikes. So we were all, you know, we'd been shooting, we scrambled, I didn't see anything that time. Right. And then the next time we came back was when Prague became the center of the second wave in Europe. So everything oh, locked down again. No. And, you, and know, you guys I, were working? Yeah. And they were totally fine with that? Well, I, we, we were kept very safe. We stayed in all our rooms and like literally almost didn't interact. It was That's pretty wild. Um, so I haven't seen Prague. I don't, I, it's, so it seems sad. very nice. Yeah, you're like, the, yeah. the sets are great. Yeah, the sets are lovely. Yeah. And you'll have to go back for I know, I know. Um, it's, it's, it's on the list. At the very least, getting to be in like sort of these monument areas, which they, you know, locked off for filming. Mm. And, you know, we were talking to a security guard at one of them. And he was like, I haven't seen less than a thousand people in this place wow. since ever since I started working here. You guys being alone, the seven of you in this room alone is like an incredibly so unique thing. And that's that's kind of special. Yeah, it's, that is really cool. It's one of the perks of the job. Yeah, right? of course, I know. Yeah. We get yeah, yeah. access to places. Yeah. <laughs> if you book the right job. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, we were super not mature about the whole thing. We were just running around being like, hey, look at this. I What's in it. here? I know. We're yeah. very mature as actors. Yes, yes, yes. we're professionals. We're we professionals. know how to behave. Yes. Um, respect the space. <laughs> What's been like your most favorite job or your favorite experience on a job that you've ever worked? Because I feel like you've done so many fun things and I feel like you've traveled a lot. Obviously Falcon and the Winter Soldier was like just this insane, yeah. like I the like. amount of money mm -hmm. and the and, and the Flag Smashers were like, they were such a good bunch of yeah. people, man. Yeah. And that, that can be rare sometimes on set that every single person is like, there's, there's not a single like squeaky gear. That was magical. But I think the first time I ever set foot on a set will still stick with me. What was that? The on Shannara Chronicles. The oh, that was your fantasy. first time on set yeah, ever? Yeah, that was sort of, yeah. That's was huge. Like, uh, I was the villain for the thing, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seeing that, like, yeah. and all the people, like, making the world come to life was yeah. pretty astounding, because I didn't really have a, I didn't have a benchmark for, for how it would work. How long had you been acting or like trying to get roles before that happened? A while. I mean, we kicked around in Australia for a bit earlier on and then we moved over here and it was sort of like starting from scratch, getting the visa and everything. Yeah, and yeah. then I was in film school, like just on a student visa, so I couldn't yeah. do anything. And my agents were trying to send me out and I'd walk into a room and they'd be like, what visa are you on? I'd be like, I thought they told you I'm on a student. And they're yeah. like, that doesn't count. We can't. Really? Like there's no reason for you to read oh, now. So that happened that a lot. But yeah, I mean, eventually once, once we, you know, graduated and got situated with the green card at, bit by bit. Yeah. Sort of started to, I mean, that's crazy though. That's like such a great first role. Like that's a great first yeah. experience on set. Yeah. Mine was like, well, I think I had two lines on an NBC show that got canceled after uh, like two episodes. I don't even know if my episode aired. Like yeah, it was yeah, so, yeah, yeah. it was so bad, but uh, it was, it was great. Cause I was so excited and it yeah. was on the Paramount lot. And I yeah. also went to film school. It's still, it it's exciting. still an incredible moment. Yeah. I mean, but as far, like, as far as that goes, what's your, like, what's your favorite moment from, from your Oh story man. Career? Um, I don't know. I feel like I have so many little moments. I, I just love being on set, like yeah. coming from film school. I don't know if you have the same um, experience, but I just like, yeah. I feel so at home on sets with like film people, mm -hmm. um, being around, you know, cameras, regardless of what side I'm on. I just like love the set vibe. Yeah. Um, one of the highlights would be um, working on Wong Fu's first feature, hey. Everything Before Us. Yeah. It was the first time that I really fought for a role. I knew that they were making the movie and I asked to audition and they were like, well, you're not really right for either part because you're kind of in the middle age-wise. Uh -huh. And I was like, I can do it. Like, let me audition. I, I can do it. I was like, I will play 10 years younger. And so Who, they let me audition. Who did you have that conversation um, with? With Phil. With Phil? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, please just let me audition. Come please, on, please. please. Cause um, like Chris had let me read the script and he was uh, like, you know, you're kind of, you're not, I think I was 26 at the time. Yeah. And you know, I played 17. Yeah. And so I was like, I know I can do it. I know I can do it. So I fought really, really hard for it. And then it was also the first time, cause back then in 20, 16 or 2015, 2016, there weren't as many Asian leads back then. And uh, so it was the first time that I was able to audition for a lead and like really be seen as a leading character. Yeah. Um, and then to do it with Wang Fu, who are awesome and you know, they're 
such proponents of like just, I mean, they've launched so many careers. Oh my God. Um, yeah. So to be able to work with them and it's their first feature and it was my first feature, it was just, it was so great. That they, was probably a highlight. They've paved the way for like so many of us. For and like they get like, everybody. It's a little, little <laughs> underrecognized in my opinion. I know, they really like, are. Like Wes and Ted. Yeah, and they're such like you. lovely individuals yeah. as well. And yeah. They fight for us so yeah. hard and they've launched all of our careers and they are really underappreciated, I think. I think if you break it down statistically, at one point they would have been responsible for the majority of leading Asian roles. Oh yeah, for sure. There would have been a solid couple of years in there where that that statistic was just a true yeah true fact, and that's yeah. And I feel like all of the actors that you see working today, I mean, there's so many of them now, which is great. They yeah. all you know started doing Wang Fu sketches. Cut the teeth. And yeah. that's how we all met each other yeah, too. It's crazy right. that we haven't met on one of those because I, I feel like we're always in the same places. <laughs> And we like know all the same people, but we've just never. That happens like weirdly a lot. I yeah. Think. In LA, anyway. And, like I, I one degree that, of separation. Yeah. With, like ten yeah, different yeah. people. Like, like barely even. People. Like you've been in the same room yes. before, and it's just like one of these with so many people. Yeah. And... You worked on. Um, I just did the the second Bachelor. The, yeah. Sketch, Asian which was <laughs> hilarious. It's so great. I love it. They had everyone who's everyone in those. I know, and I was like super intimidated because I was walking in like. Because I've watched Wong Fu, like, I've watched yeah. all their stuff. Did you grow from, up like, watching it? Back. Yeah, like, yeah. that's the, the, a lot of the reason why I got into this. I did, I did an exchange year in 2008. Okay. Uh, to, this was my first time in America, um, and that was while I was in uni. There were a couple of awakenings. It was the first time I'd ever been around that many Asians before. Oh, really? Like, my friendship group just ended up being majority Asian because yeah. I went to UCI. Okay. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so it was like, oh, this is what it feels like to have a community. Mm. And then the second, like, we just, like, gather after parties and, like, hang out and watch Wong Fu videos. Yeah. Like, I still remember that little toothbrush short that Wes put together, kind of the Hong Kong one. It was really good. The anyway. I don't even know what that is. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, like, deep apocrypha. Okay, okay. But, uh, yeah, they, they blazed that trail. They sort of were yeah. like, hey, you can be a cinematographer or a videographer or, yeah. like, a director or something, and, and no one's going to, like, laugh at you. And yeah. people are going to support you. They're so inspiring. Thank you, yeah. Wang Fu. Thanks, we guys. love you guys. Yeah. <laughs> if you're watching this, if, yeah, yeah. you better watch this. Yeah. yeah. Wes, yeah. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> um, so wait, did you not grow up with an Asian community in Australia? Uh, yes and no. It's a bit different as well because we're such a we're we're a younger migrant group. Right. You know, when I was growing up, there were fewer of us, mm -hmm. but in a weird way, that makes you less threatening. And there wasn't that level of racism because people didn't have that fear yet in mm -hmm. them. I like to describe it as they hadn't figured out how to be racist yet. Yeah, but there's um, still a lot of because I grew up. You know, I was the only, one of the only Asians in my community as yeah. well. America has more of a history with racism, so yes. we do have that. But it was yeah. a lot more like ignorance as opposed to yeah. like, you know, just straight out racism. Or out and out, you know, like violence. Yeah, yeah, um, there wasn't, I mean, I didn't feel like anyone was super, well, well, <laughs> there's always the one that yeah. sticks with you, but yeah, yeah always, mostly. Happened, I just got bullied a lot. Uh, um, I feel like that happens a lot with kids in general, and mm -hmm. so it was an easy thing to target. The first thing that you see about me is that I'm Asian, so I'm sure I would have, you know, kids just bully. I would have been bullied, I'm sure, for something else, yeah. but that was that was what I got bullied for sometimes. Yeah. Kids are unoriginal. Yeah. Like I said, they'll go, to, they'll go to the most obvious, visible yeah. thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. I was also like a huge nerd, so I had that, <laughs> I had that going for me. You know, I had the glasses and the braces and the, oh whole, my goodness. the whole nine yards. So yes, it, I was a very easy target, I will say that. But yep. look at me now. <laughs> Have there been any like unique challenges, do you reckon, being how we look? In this I mean, obviously, we touched on with the Wong Fu stuff. Yeah. But. I mean, you had your visa stuff, but I think for mm. me, like coming in, there just weren't roles for me yeah. when I first started in 2010, 2011. Right. Like, there just weren't roles for me. And that yeah. was a whole conversation with my team. And, and it was crazy that the only things that I was going out for were things that were stereotypes, things mm. that were making fun of being Asian. Um, I never went out for, for leads or anything like that. Right. Yeah. But I mean, things have gotten so much better. So much better. Do you feel like? Do oh, I feel like it's, yeah. I mean, I still feel like we have ways to go, but. Yeah, I mean, there's always <laughs> that, right? Like compared yeah. to where we come from, it's just like an embarrassment mm -hmm. of stuff, but compared to like any other group, just on the on the numbers of it, it's like, we're still incredibly underrepresented. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, do you, so I feel like you as an actor, you're like a like a hot male actor. <laughs> do you know, like, right? Like he's like a sexy male oh, no. actor. And that's like a new, okay. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna break the camera. Yeah. But like, <laughs> Like that's like a new category for Asian men though. You know what it I mean? Is. Like I feel like DDK mm -hmm. like kind of 
busted that open of yeah. like he was on Lost and he was like the first time people saw an Asian man as being like sexy and attractive. You know what's wild about Lost and Daniel Day-Kim mm. on Lost is I you know back in, that was back in Australia and I would yeah. have conversations with friends. And it was so confusing to me because I was like, that is an incredibly attractive man. Yeah. That is a that is a good looking he is, dude. He is the pinnacle and I'd of have yes. Chats with friends who ostensibly weren't racist, right? Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say that they are necessarily, mm -hmm. but there'd be a lot of like pushback on that idea. Like they wouldn't we find him attractive. Fans. And they're like, no, what? No, Saeed is like, oh like the only reason there was like pushback was just because we didn't have that societal precedent yeah, of an yeah. Asian We're not male used as to an attractive person. Of, yeah, Asian yeah. being attractive. Yeah. Because yeah. all evidence to the contrary. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It was yeah, that, that is was crazy. Yeah. But now, but now all of my friends are like, Oh, BTS, they're so hot, all right. these things. I'm like, this yeah. is so crazy that people are considering, you know, us as it's attractive. Pretty, it's it's kind of nice. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. I think we have a responsibility not to let the needle swing too far in, right. in, in the other direction. Well, that's, mean, the, that's on our side, right? The yeah, women's right. side. We've always yeah. been seen as yeah. the opposite. Yeah, but. Yeah. All, all Asian males having missed that growing up, mm. we there's, there is a subset of us, I think, that subscribe to the white version of it, for, right, for lack right. of a better term. And it can be a little toxic sometimes. So mm -hmm. I think all the working out and getting like swole and like working mm -hmm. hard and like doing all Those that Those are stuff. like all of your it's, friends though. Right. You guys all work out together. I know, I know. It, it, is, it is important. It's good. To some it is important. It's, it's important to have balance as well. Yes. I think is my, I agree. Is my point. You yeah. Because we don't want to, we don't want to leave any other communities behind, you know, by mm -hmm. pushing masculinity and making it only that one thing as well, mm -hmm. then we exclude. It's very well yeah. said, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if this has been your experience, but in a way, sometimes we just have to move where culture wants us to move mm. to some degree. We have to thread yeah. that needle. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's hard. You want to you wanna move in that direction, but also like push back when things are just not yes. right. So it's hard to, yeah. to walk that line while also still trying to have a career. And you know, you don't want to be too much and then have people never hire you. I know. <laughs> so it's a hard it's, line to walk. I don't know how you felt with your, with, you know, your first few gigs, but I, I always, fancied myself the sort of actor like, no, no, I'm here to do my job. I'm gonna take direction, like give me the direction. I will figure out a way to make yeah. it work. I'll make everything work. Yeah. And over time I've found that, not that I'm like, oh, I'm willfully difficult now, but if there is something that is a problem, like you, you have to speak up and say something, you're yeah. the final gatekeeper, it's your face on no, screen. No, for sure. I mean, when you're yeah. first starting, I think it comes with maturing though, like as yeah. you age. When I was yeah. in my young 20s, I didn't know how to say no to anything and I yep. didn't know who I was and all that stuff. And so it's a lot easier to just take the roles that are given to you and not yeah. stand up for what you think is right. Yeah. We've been in this industry for a while and we're standing on our own mm. two feet and also, you know, therapy, getting older, yeah, all of that stuff. All of it. Like now it's a lot easier to say, no, you know what, I don't think that's right or that doesn't. Yeah vibe with me. Is there yeah. like a specific incident that you, you know, you're really proud of like, yeah, I did that. Like it can be small because sometimes these things aren't huge things, but like. No, I mean, I think, I think I've always been really proud of how um, my team has really respected what I will and will not do. Oh, hell yeah. You know, like back when we were talking about earlier, very early on, I said, you know, I'm not going to do something that is at the expense of my race. Frankly, the system made it easy to sell ourselves out. Yeah. Um, it still does. Yeah, it still does. Yeah. It still does to this day. Does. There's still actors out there who are searching for that first gig and mm -hmm. I'm not going to hold it against them, the yeah. actor, if you know, you got you to do the role. You got to move where culture wants to bills. move you sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But hopefully on the back end with showrunners and writers and the producers and stuff, there's going to be less and less and less of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, so you were on like the other side of the camera. You went to film school for write, writing. For writing, yeah. For writing. Do you still write? I fell out for a second. Okay. I, fell I mean, out it's, for a second. you've been so busy working. Well, <laughs> it's hard to find the time. It was a combination of things. Did you want to get into acting or was it just well, sort of like a. I majored in cinematography and oh. I, I came out here to direct cool. um, and, then, and then started acting and yeah. then just got, was busy acting. But That's sort of how it happened for me as well. Yeah. That's like, crazy. I was like, oh, I'm on the writing track. Yeah. I'm a writer now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do writing. And then my old agents from Australia were just like, hey, no, you're not. Go do this thing. Yeah. Just do these last few auditions for us, please. Yeah. Um, so you actually made a choice and you yeah. were like, I'm going, I, this is what I love and this is what I want to do yeah. and I don't want to write yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah, for now. And for now. Yeah. And I was like, because I knew at that point how baby writers got treated in town. Yeah. And it's worse than actors by yeah. far. Yeah. I was like, okay, hey, once I build a little bit of reputation or like heat or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call that as an actor, mm -hmm. it just makes the writing side so much easier. Totally. Do but you want to be more on that side of like helping things get made or? I, I don't know. 
to be honest. Out. I'm not geared to be a producer, I don't think. The business side not of that, a lot of that hustle. Are. Yeah, very it's hard. Difficult. It's yeah. very hard. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're that. so talented and just keep booking work. So I think if you just wanted to act and just be an actor, I think it would work out for you. Right back at you. But <laughs> is, there, you. is there anything else that you would, you would want to yeah, do? Yeah, I like? mean, I feel like... Um, I, I don't really, I'm not like a planner. Mm -hmm. And so when I was in my young 20s and I was getting more gigs acting than I was, you know, getting my own projects off the ground, um, I was like, well, I'll just do this for a little bit. And then all of a sudden 10 years flew by and I was like, oh my God, I, I, I've been acting for 10 years. I can't believe it. And so I think during the pandemic, you know, when we weren't able to work as much, I was like, I really miss being on the other side of the camera and I miss creating stories and, you know, a lot of, a lot of what we do as actors is not controlled by us. Like it's on the cutting room floor or we don't get cast or whatever it is. And I just want to be able to create opportunities for other people and just tell stories that hopefully I have a little more control over. I'm a control yeah. freak as I think what I'm learning. <laughs> and I want to be able to control the stories more than I can when I'm just acting in them. And so I think I, I do want to go back on the other side of the camera and I have been doing it. I, I directed a short right before the pandemic and I'm working on a documentary right now and I would love to direct a feature. I've Hell yeah. One day, it's a little scary to me, but I, that's what I would love to do. I'd love to just be able to work on a feature and, and not act in it at all, just just mm -hmm. direct it. I mean, now we're just talking like big dreams, but I'd love to be like DDK. I'd love to yeah. have my own production company. And you know, he, I really do look up to him and how much he's done for our community um, so and much. the opportunities that he's created for, for people within our community. Yeah. I think it's just so important to have people who look like us on the other side mm. in those big rooms who are you know yeah. opening those doors. I feel like I gotta be someone first. So <laughs> working on that part, but that's that's my far off goal. I feel you on that one. It's sort yeah. of like you, you wanna you wanna get in at the right time. Mm -hmm. You know? So Daniel Day Kim, obviously, like we we share that as a point of inspiration, but mm -hmm. like is there anyone else that you look up to um, in two ways? Yeah, I mean Sandra is my queen and oh, will be yes. forever. If I ever get to meet with or work with her, I think I will just like lose all of my words and everything will just fall out of my body and I'll just be staring at her in awe. <laughs> just be because a I love her. Victoria. Yeah, just a <laughs> cuddle and hopefully I'll be able to gather myself up to just, I mean, she just meant so much to me. I watched yeah. Grey's Anatomy in high school and college with all of my white girlfriends and just how she's so authentically herself and she's so wildly talented. So I look up to her a lot. Um, what about you? It's tricky because I kind of like have a two-part answer to this. There are people mm -hmm. that I, I very much admire as far as like an acting, their acting goes. Like I really like Paul Rudd and you know Tom Hardy. I think is a fantastic yeah, actor. Yeah, for sure. I think I've been around enough now to know that I don't. That doesn't necessarily line up with that. Do I want to work with them? Oh, I interesting. I don't know them. Right. You know, before like I sort of held all these idols in my head, and I've found for me better for me not to have a lot of those preconceptions mm -hmm. i've had a lot of like don't meet your heroes moments i have too um, i mean we won't talk about it yeah we won't talk about that but i have but, like, too it's sad it's it's trained me to be a little like hang on i want to know someone first before i'm like ah, oh, would i love to have you on the future path mm -hmm. having said that there are just some icons as well <laughs> like if i could work with like lucy Liu, like oh my god can you that imagine that would be I would also be a puddle. Yeah, I, I, I would be. I would not be able to. This would be an impossible situation because yeah. I would not be able to gather myself and do the take. <laughs> I know. And they would have to find me. I know. So. I had an audition once where and I bombed the audition because I was just picturing reading in front of like my childhood crush. Yeah. And I just like, I couldn't get words out. <laughs> just imagining it. Just the gift of imagination. I was like, what? well, that's not going to happen. Yep. And uh, yeah. I love auditioning though. I don't know if I'm the only person in the world. You I do, do too. I miss rooms. I do I miss love rooms. I think yeah. they're so fun. Yeah. And I miss like, yeah, going into the room yeah. and seeing the casting director and just playing. And I think it's so fun. When you connect with them, it's, it's, it just works yeah. so much better. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like, like you can take risks. There's been a couple of casting directors actually during the pandemic that have like been like, hey, no, jump on a Zoom and like we'll give you some direction. I've also had Zoom auditions where they just don't give you anything <laughs> and it's so awkward. <laughs> I had this one Zoom so audition awkward. where it was like they had me set up this eye line that was just a blank spot on my wall. Oh, and no. And I was like, I can't, like, why can't I just look at the person? I know. I just... What do you feel like you've learned about yourself in this pandemic Ooh. year and a half now that we're emerging? Um, I've learned that I'm more patient than I thought I would. 
B. That's great. We really, we locked out hard. We Did you lock down uh, here? Yeah, yeah. My wife didn't leave the house for like 67 days. I think she kept a diary. It was oh like gosh. literally for the start of the she was in inside in our apartment for 67 days straight. That's um, Which crazy. is wild. Yeah, um, I think I found out I was more impatient ah. <laughs> in the pandemic. I've learned how to be more patient, but I learned that I was very impatient. Uh, yeah, I but I don't know. I'm, I might be passing a judgment that's not correct, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we're both very like work-oriented people, and we're all about like just being in our work, and especially you know when we're booking things and we're just traveling and we're not with our families. And I think I, I just really prioritized work, and I think that's great, but also... I've learned that you know my family's really important, my husband's really important, my marriage is important, my dog is important, my mental health is important. All of these things that I don't think I've really valued or prioritized before the pandemic. I was a bit of a workaholic, and so I'm trying to now that we're reemerging from our little groundhog holes. <laughs> and now it's like all these new talented faces are coming up out of the woodwork, and I'm like, where are these people coming from? It makes me feel kind of old. <laughs> Like, because, when, so, you know, when we started, it was like we were the faces that nobody knew. And yeah. we all kind of, like, we all knew each other. Like, the same, you know, six girls every audition. Like, if it was, you know, an Asian role, it was like, oh, well, here we all are again. Hello. And we all became friends. But, yeah, I mean, there's so many new faces now. And it's really exciting it's cool, to man. see. I can think of so many more TV shows and movies now that have Asians in the cast, if not the lead, in yeah. the cast. I had, a, I had a really egotistical thought what? about this exact. <laughs> what was it? This whole situation. Because it would be, the, like, like the same eight Asian dudes. Yeah. In a room and, and you all uh, know each other and yeah i know yeah. a friend of mine um it was me and him another guy from australia we were in the room and sung kang was in the room mm -hmm. as well like he was just waiting just sung kang in the corner yeah. like being real cool and stuff yeah yeah me and my friend were like oh my god sung kang was in the room how yeah, crazy was yeah, that yeah. that was insane <laughs> like and obviously he had no idea who we were and then yeah. he walked right past us just as we were doing that and we were like oh no <laughs> we're like we were just talking about cool but stuff but the egotistical thought <laughs> yes. is what if we're Sung Kang now oh my god what if people <laughs> walk in the room and they're like oh that's Victoria Park <laughs> I mean that would that would be wild I don't I don't think that that is the case but yeah that would be wild yeah. I mean it is cool to see everyone you know people that we all started with and we were all thrown in a room and I feel like there's just so many more opportunities now so to yeah. see everyone working and everyone kind of like in their lane is so awesome and being able to be themselves in their lane yeah because it used to be those like one or two categories right mm -hmm. but now it's like oh you can just like you can be true yeah. to yourself because we're all different, yeah, different even though we're going out for the same parts yeah. it's only because of the way we look but yeah. now we're able to really lean into who we are that's one of the, the biggest things for me is just being able to go in and be like hey there's lots of different versions of this character i i just want to do something drastically different i want to play a villain you got to play Ooh. a villain it is a weird experience though, like a lot of the time the only time the villains and the heroes interact is like a couple of dialogue scenes and fights. Right, So right. you like don't see the other, you like yeah, get together yeah. at this training camp you're in like your early lair. on and everyone's super close. Yeah. And then you just don't see them for like a month because you're yeah. never on set for the, yeah. the, true, the true. same time. Is oh yeah, you'd make, a, you'd make a great villain. Wouldn't I? Yeah. 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 I think that's like, I'm going to take that as a compliment. That was good. That's good. <laughs> what about you? Uh, Space Cowboy. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was really easy to come yeah. up with. Yeah, okay, yeah. Great. I know, one of the first TV shows I fell in love with was like Firefly. Like even when I was like learning the American accent, I didn't know there were different American accents. <laughs> I thought they were all the same American accent. So I learned my American accent from Firefly, oh. which is like deep Western, like, hey, yeah. how you doing? Like, so that's I'm, like your sweet spot of American accent. I, I, like I'd walk into rooms and, and think I was doing a proper Gen Am accent and yeah. I'd just be sounding like a cowboy and I think the casting directors were all just like, Where is this guy you, from? What are you? And it wasn't a good one either because yeah. you could still kind of hear the Australian. So yeah. it was a mess. Yeah. I, Have you gotten to play with your Aussie accent? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 A couple of times. Once in a comedy and then uh, Falcon Winter Soldier as well. Oh, they yeah, let me yeah. They let me play. I'm What's literally that? watching just... that right now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm it's watching kind of a muddled right accent now. as well though because yeah. they were like, you guys are very international. You, right. You know, right. You know, Aw, this, is, this so is, nice. is so nice. This is so nice. I know. I'm like, we could, we could just actually, sit here we could stay here for talk like for hours while they're editing. If you guys just want to head off <laughs> and get lunch, we'll just hang out for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for setting this up. Thanks for sitting down with me. No, thank you. This is so nice. And let's so do this again. We'll do a coffee. Shit. Like, like in a coffee shop. I know. Ooh. With our spouses. I haven't been in a coffee shop in a year and a half. Four half. people in a coffee shop. <laughs> you must be crazy. That's the new movie. I know. You're yes. directing. All right. We'll, we'll right. get it. Yeah. We'll do it. Yes. Coming soon to a screen near you. Done. And. And scene. scene. <laughs>